Last time on Races to Places, Lyndon broke poor Basil. Not a happy man. So, casting memories back to Erzberg 2018, where en route to the race, I had my van broken into and everything stolen. I had about 12,000 pounds worth of camera equipment stolen. And it was all my camera stuff for races to places. And so, I've had to go through a couple of months of like getting the money together and trying to replenish all my camera equipment. I arrived here in Cape Town and was introduced to Arms and they've been good enough to try and help me uh, get sorted out with all my camera equipment, the right stuff that I need and uh, hopefully at a bit of a discount. Let's go get it sorted out. <laughs> Hey Dick, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. So today's the day, we're going to get sorted out. So that's it, we've got all the camera gear that I'm going to use in Africa. It's been really difficult selecting camera gear. Um, it's always a compromise, you can never get one camera to do everything, so from my experience on Races to Places so far, I've gone with the minimum that I think I need to do the best job possible, and we've also got some new capabilities. Yeah, I'm looking forward to using it and trying something different and seeing how we get on. Well that's a nice sight to see isn't it folks? Looks like Basil has been repaired and he's back in good health. Brilliant news. I'm really looking forward to Africa, so I'm going to spend the weekend here just relaxing, enjoying Cape Town before hitting the road and I'm going to head do some passes and I'm going to head over to Johannesburg where I've got the opportunity to race the Hammersmith 400 with Terence Marsh from Redline racing Nissan so I'm super excited for my first opportunity to race in a car uh, so I'm going to go do that and then from there I'm going to make my way to Johannesburg do a presentation there but all the time I'm going to be exploring Africa well today, we're leaving Cape Town and we're heading to the most southern point of Africa. Wow, looks like the captain of the ship wasn't paying attention. This shipwreck behind me is the remains of the Miishe Maru from Japan. It's the most southern shipwreck in Africa. It ran aground on the 16th of November 1982, carrying 240 tons of tuna. 17 crew members managed to escape and swim to shore, and they all survived. What's left of it still sits here today, rotting away in the ocean. arrived uh, in the middle of the Tunkwa and I uh, found a place called the Tunkwa Tented Camp. So tonight uh, I'm going to stay in this tent. So I was wondering what all the black was on the wall and uh, the guys behind the bar told me that somebody put the motorcycle on the bar 
person did a burnout. And that's what all that is up on the wall there. And that rubber, this is rubber, stuck to here from a burnout. Wow, well, check out my food for tonight. The guys here at the tented camp have just hooked me up with this. Sausage, meat, potatoes and sauce. Well, that definitely beats the standard racist to places camp food of tuna and pasta. What a change. Ray, you're doing a great job of breakfast this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I just made it to uh, Matches Fontaine, beautiful little uh, town here but uh, they don't have any fuel and the next fuel station is 25 kilometers away so it's going to be tight, we have to go really really slow to try and get there. We're now riding from Tumqua region and heading for Nizna. These place names are real tongue twisters. We're up in, uh, in Sutherland, the Northern Cape, and there's a cold front come through today, uh, so it's absolutely freezing. It's like, look, I've got the Gore-Tex gloves on. Let's just clean the lens a little bit here for uh, There was actually snow on the pass coming over the top there to Sutherland. Woo! Anyway. We just have to keep moving. That's it. Getting the kilometers in. And here we go again, it's puncture time. That's nice to see, you've got your tools arranged neatly there son. That Enduristan tool pack looks the business. Gotta get to where we're going before dark, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tight. So we better get on it now. So people ask me how I lock my bike up in Africa. You can see I put it on the rear wheel like that. Up over the luggage rack, and then it acts as my steering lock as well. And I just lock it on there like that. Well, what a fantastic day today. Yeah, it was going to be a tough one to get here before dark, but we just made it, so I've just parked Basil up and uh, found a little hotel here. I'm go get something nice to eat. So this morning we're going to do pay a little visit to a place called uh, the Motorcycle Room in Neisner. Uh, met a guy last night named Colin who's uh, got a collection of motorcycles in a place just in the village here in Neisner. So let's go take a look and check it out. Wow, what a fine selection of motorcycles here. I'm sure you riders out there can all think back to a first bike, or one that left a lasting memory. If so, let's hear about it, and leave a comment under this video. 
This room is my happy place. Although I have modern and new bikes here, the main aim of this room is to take old and forgotten bikes about that would have been headed for the dump and save them. Some are restored and some are left just the way they are. Remember that 50 year old school in the wind and rain? It may be here. The dirt bike you learned to ride on? It may be here too. There are many people who collect rare priceless bikes that you and I have never ridden and never will. This is not that place. This place is about memories and old friends that we wish we had never sold. I hope those memories come back to you while you are here. This is a living collection. These bikes get ridden. So if one or two are dirty, it's because I haven't had time to wash them yet. If it is in very bad condition, it's waiting to be restored. This collection grows by the day. I'm forever hunting the next barn find. So if your old friend is not here, keep coming back, who knows? I may just find it. Until then, please enjoy my collection. Colin Stunden. I'm just doing a little video next to this Yamaha TY250 Monoshock because this is one of the early trials bikes that I used to ride in the UK. I had one of these that I restored myself. I actually restored it into a pinky, which was the later model, um, but it was a fake. It was one of these. Um, and I really enjoyed riding this bike. It brings back some memories seeing it here. Making tracks. She's a bit slippery today. But a lot of fun. How are you doing, Basil? Rather well, Lyndon. Thanks for asking. Looking forward to hitting these trails. Good. Let's go. So guys, I've, uh, I've just got to the end of this. You can see the gate gate is locked behind me. Um, and uh, what they're telling me is that I should have stopped at the first gate crossing um, and paid for a permit to come through there. Uh, and well, to be honest, they were, they were telling me I couldn't go through there and there was no way to go back because if I went back I wouldn't have got back in daylight and that seemed crazy to me when I can come through this way so I actually thought it was a little bit dodgy so I just rode through and now I'm reaping the benefits of this, of this side or so I don't know what's going to happen they said that they need to speak to their manager and there could be a fine or something so I'm, I'm a, bit, a little bit frustrated let's see what happens eh thanks Go before dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before dark, you will be on the tar again. Oh yeah. No, that was uh, better than it could have been. Thank you, guys. Time to wind the throttle open on Basil and head north towards Lesotho. Next time on Races to Places We'll follow Lyndon's journey through the Harris Smith 400, where he'll be sat in the navigator's seat. Hey, man. This is not a bad thing. We'll have to man. It's too hard to It's not
Hey everyone, I just want to say a massive thank you to you all for watching my media and for all the great comments that I receive every single day. Please keep them coming. I'm just going to share with you my Patreon page. Patreon is a membership based platform that gives creators like me the opportunity to continue cr to create the media that you love to watch. For just a few dollars a month, I can give you priority viewing, I can give you special features, informative posts about the things that you want to know. It creates a platform for interaction between you the viewer and me the creator. Now a few dollars a month might not seem like a lot to you but for me collectively it makes a huge difference. So please check out the link at the bottom of the page and I appreciate any contribution you can make to make my job sustainable. In return for that I promise to keep creating great media that you love dreaming up new projects, filming it and sharing it with you all. Thanks.